What's going on, everyone? We are talking about the newly announced Sigma 14 millimeter 1.4 DGDN lens for the Sony E mount and L mount Alliance. Check out these sample images. So as we saw from the sample images there, this lens performs beautifully when used correctly. Now, primarily for my photography, I used urban landscapes. So I used buildings and I used architecture and I try to capture some people once in a while just to try, try to give a different perspective. But Sigma is really targeting the astrophotographer with this lens. Now, where I stay here in Singapore and because of the light pollution and because of the weather, it's really hard to get really clear skies with really nice stars out there. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture those for you. Really surprised by the performance of this lens, especially wide open at 1.4. Now it does have three FLD elements and four spherical elements inside of this. Sigma has packed a lot of great glass in this lens and you can tell right from the very first shot that you take that this is a special lens. It's not gonna be for everybody. Now for the person who doesn't really shoot 14 millimeters all the time, I would offer the 1424 from Sigma. At least you have a range to go with that. And that's a 2.8, it's not a 1.4, but at least you have some room to play with. But if you know that you need a 14 millimeter lens for your applications, your type of photography, this is a lens to heavily consider. And it's gonna be a little bit of an investment, but Sigma has really packed a lot of great glass and a lot of great performance inside of it. Now I wanna talk about what's inside the box because there's some new additions here that I think are gonna be really helpful for a lot of you out there. Now this is a lens heat retainer ring. Now, I don't use a lens heater and because it's hot and humid here in Singapore and I'm not in a climate where it's very, very cold. But if you are, let's say, the Northern Lights, for example, or you want to shoot stars in a colder climate and you're using a lens heater, this retainer ring does come in handy and this is inside the box when you get this lens. Also, because the front element is so bulbous, you're not able to put a uh, any sort of ND filter or any sort of filter for that matter. So on the back of it, you actually they actually give you a pattern where you can actually cut out your own filter and put that inside the back of the lens. Outside of that, you have a toolkit here. I believe this is for your tripod footing there and you have two bolts, so keep that in handy. And you got two straps that come inside of the box. So you're pretty well prepared for this lens because I think, again, this is a specialty lens. It's used for primarily astrophotography, but you can use it for other applications. But if you need these things, it does come inside the box. Now, also another feature of this lens, which is new, is the lens cap. And I wanna show you what's very cool about this right now. Now, you don't wanna lose your uh, filters. You can actually store them inside the lens cap right here. You have door one, door two, and there you have it. You can store them in there and this is a pinch cap so you can actually just put this on the lens pinch it solid it's not coming off very good addition to have with this lens now outside of that let me show you the front element here so you have an idea this portion of the lens does uh it's sort of lens so it does not come off so you cannot remove that and obviously it's for protection of this bulbous front element here but it is uh pretty well protected i say you're not going to touch anything. Of course, if you touch this side, you're going to hit it because it's a little bit lower. So you can get that wide angle shot without any sort of interference, but you are pretty much covered. Now, in terms of the weight, this lens comes in at 1,170 grams. It's a heavy sucker. So if you're using it, let's say on the Sigma FPL, which I have right here, I would definitely would want a vertical grip. Now, this is not the Sigma FPL or FP does not come with a vertical grip. So you may want to opt for, let's say, a more traditional camera body, like, for example, the new S5 II, S5 II X, S1R, S1H, S1, like SL2, SL2S, you kind of get where I'm going with this. You may want to go for that because of the weight of this lens. It does remind me a little bit of the Sigma 105 1.4 in terms of its design and build quality, but I would say this is a little bit more robust than I think because of the weather that this has to withstand and the type of durability this has to withstand, that this is maybe a little bit uh, more it's got some gusto to it versus the 105 1.4, which is a beautiful lens, by the way. But uh, outside of that, let's talk about some of the features here. You do have a manual focus lock on this. So if you, just in case you have this set on a tripod and you've got it all dialed in for your stars and you're like, you accidentally hit that lens, you're not gonna be uh, out of focus. That lock can be put in place, you're good to go. Although it's also an autofocus lock button as well. Autofocus, manual focus switch, as you would. You can de-click the aperture and click it on. Also, you have an aperture lock switch as well. So you're pretty much dialed in on that. And of course, you can turn the what the uh, the tripod ring here has not really clicks per se. I mean, there's a little bit of feedback, but there's, it's not clickable on each of the sections here. 
So that is something to keep in mind. But outside of that though, I have to say, I really like the performance of the lens. I think it gives a really nice depth of field if you wanna get close up on a subject, if you wanna be a little bit different with some interesting distortion, it's very cool to use it that way. You can use this as an artistic lens as well. So I know Sigma is targeting the astrophotographer and I get that, but I think what's cool about photography, as many of you know, is that sometimes taking a lens or a camera for that matter, or any product for that matter, that's designed for one thing, but also trying to be more creative with it and take it out of its element and see what you can do with it. And this lens invites you to do that. And that's something that I really enjoy doing it with. Now, again, I'm not a wide angle photographer for the most part. I love super telephoto and I like, you know, more traditional focal lengths, but the 14 millimeter for the time that I've had it has been actually really fun to play with. And even for video, I mean, for that matter, if you want to vlog with this thing, you could, it's a great focal length for vlogging. I mean, it is, but it's very, very heavy. So, you know, I would tread lightly, use a very light camera if you're going to vlog for this thing. And uh, you definitely want to hold some sort of grip on the bottom of the camera just so you can keep it steady. But now, are there any cons to this lens that I discovered? You know, not really in terms of the performance, I would say autofocusing is really quick. It works for phase detect and contrast based system. So you're good in that way. It's, it is what it is. I would say the only issue or the only thing I wish that was a little bit different is here on the tripod footing. You can't put your fingers or you can't kind of grasp it underneath it like that. So if you want to walk around and sometimes hold your lens that way, I sometimes do that with 70 to 200s or 100s or 400 lenses. As I'm walking around, let's say at the zoo or the bird park or whatever, and I don't want to carry it on a strap, I just will hold it that way. You can't do with this lens. It's really, really close to the bottom of the, um, of the lens itself. So I barely, I can't even get a finger inside of that thing. That's the only issue I would say. Outside of that though, in terms of the performance and build quality, I think it's pretty damn good. And I'm sure you're gonna see some other videos on this as well, depending on the application you're gonna use it for. But I would say if you want a 14 millimeter prime, this is the, probably the best one on the market to get at this point in time. It's the fastest on the market as well. And uh, if you're somewhat new to this focal length, you're not too sure if you want to invest in it, then I would suggest go for the 1424 F2.8 by Sigma. At least you have some versatility there. And then if you really know that you wanna get a 14 millimeter prime, then you could obviously invest into something like this and you're going to be good to go. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the Sigma 14 millimeter F1.4 DGDN lens for the Sony E-mount and L-mount lens. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. More content coming your way. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon.